tonight on Super Size vs Super Skinny. Two worlds collide as the feeding clinic gets two more extreme eaters. Junk food addict Andy. I think if they made a salad that tasted as good as, as fish and chips, I, I would be slim. And too busy to eat, Hannah. Food is just something that takes up more time. It doesn't really play a role in my life. They're damaging their bodies with their destructive diets, so it's time for a week of shock therapy. Also, our four anorexics bravely confront their issues with food head on. I found it exceedingly difficult mm -hmm. watching all that oil go on. And Anna's arms get a gruelling circus workout. I'm the only one that can't spin properly. For the next five days, Andy and Hannah will be taking part in our diet swap experiment, where they will exchange a typical week's intake, meal for meal. The swap will be overseen by Dr. Christian Jessen, who's giving both Super Size and Super Skinny a wake-up call before it's too late. Super Skinny Hannah runs her own bookkeeping business, leaving her no time to eat. Running my own business means that I'm very, very busy, very focused on my work. Um, I tend to get very involved in what I'm doing and forget about eating. Despite being 28, Hannah exists on a diet of sugary snacks and kids' cereal. If I'm in the office and I want something quick that I can eat while I'm working, a bowl of cereal is the easiest thing, and I don't really like any other cereals other than chocolate. <laughs> For Hannah, food is just something else on her list of things to do. There are lots of things which I don't like or I won't eat. I don't cook, I don't get involved with food, so for me it's just another thing that has to be done. The only decent meal she gets is dinner, which her partner insists she eats. I just worry that she's not getting, you know, that which she needs during the day. But it's the arrival of her son Charlie that's finally prompted her to change. Having Charlie's made me realise um, that I need to adjust the way that I deal with food. I don't want to project onto him um, my eating habits. Hi there, Hannah. Yes. I'm Christian. Nice to meet you. Hannah's been put through a detailed medical to make sure she's up to the task ahead. So that makes you 95 pounds. At six stone ten and at five foot seven, Hannah should be around nine stone. Her low weight has some serious health implications. For the same reasons that overweight people have health risks, underweight people do too. And with someone with a diet as bad as yours, where you're lacking all sorts of important things that you need, you're going to run into problems with musculature, breakdown, weakness, tiredness, lethargy, anemia. They might not necessarily be happening now, but leave things as they are and that will be a reality in the future. Good boy. Not only is her quick-fix diet having an impact on her body, her erratic eating is causing problems at home. It's Charlie. When I come home from work, he'll say, oh, what have you eaten today? And I generally don't answer him. Um, and it's kind of got to the point where he doesn't bring up food because he knows it will cause an argument. If she had a bit more energy, we could do more things, rather than just sitting in front of the TV, which tends to, to be what happens. And I just, you know, I, I, I fear, you know, that if we just did this for the rest of our lives, that, you know, that, that maybe our relationship wouldn't last forever. My partner does everything, cooking, cleaning, he looks after our son. Um, and I'd like to be able to participate in that. So does your partner mainly do the sort of the hard work, the housework and the looking after your, yeah, your baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you getting upset? Because it's not fair on them. If you realise that it's such a problem and you can see that and it's upsetting you now, why do you think you haven't been able to change it so far? I don't know, because I don't know how to get out of the cycle. I don't know... I don't know how to change the way that I view food. I don't know how to change my lifestyle. And I'm not going to listen to anyone that's close to me because I like them to think that I can do it all by myself. But Hannah doesn't have to go it alone. Coming to the rescue is Super Size Andy, who's hoping to pass on his passion for food. Step on. Let's see how much you weigh. 
So that makes you 347 pounds. At nearly 25 stone, junk food addict Andy is morbidly obese. Just like Hannah, this 32-year-old from Walsall is devoted to his family, but his diet could destroy his life. I'm only 32, but I don't think I'll be here much longer if I keep going the way I'm going. Andy's binging is based on fast food. My favourite food is, is possibly chips, in, in any meal you can think of. Even, even a Sunday roast, I might scoop some chips on there. I love kebab meat, and nearly every time I go to the chip shop, if I don't have the kebab meat with the chips, I have a kebab burger to take with me as well. I need, I need re-educating. I'm, I'm stuck in my own little bubble. Tell me about your, your weight history. I've always been uh, bigger than everybody else. Uh, I've always roughly been the same weight in stones as my age up until the age of about 26, 27. What's causing your weight gain? I know it's common sense to eat less, exercise more, uh, to lose weight, but I really don't know the right way to go about these things. With a second child on the way, he's desperate to get his life on track. How lucky can one guy be? Recently made redundant, Andy sings for charity at his local bingo club. Like Ain't that a kick in the head? If I go for job interviews, I think when I walk into the room and the interviewer's sitting there, I think they've made their mind up before I've sat down. Because of my size, he can't do this job. He's lazy. He's not going to be reliable. So I feel it affects my work options as well. But I feel like I'm letting it beat me as well. And I, and I can't let that happen. But as well as his weight affecting his career options, it's also having a serious effect on his young son. Yeah, tell me a little bit about it. It's Jake, isn't it? Jake, yes. Son. Tell me what's happening with him. Um, he's, a, he's a little mini-me, and that's very scary to think that I'm his role model. Eating a takeaway and chips every night is going to be telling him this is an acceptable way to behave and to eat. And it's not, is that? No. I need to, to change my entire outlook now and do something that I can realistically keep on doing forever. With a 20 stone difference, Andy and Hannah are complete opposites. Before they begin the swap, it's time for them to meet. It's really nice to meet you, it's, uh, this has been the most nerve-wracking uh, part yes. of this. <laughs> Andy and Hannah have provided details of a typical week's food intake, which they'll be swapping when the experiment begins. We're going to start with your breakfast. Here we go. Whoa! Sweets for breakfast. Breakfast, yeah, is that about right? Ugh. Some sort of revolting looking cereal. Let's go on to lunches. Let's see how much you tend to get through for lunch. That looks like more cereal. It's something I can eat while I'm still working. Now, dinners, I think your partner makes me. He does. So yes. I'm hoping these are about. Let's have a look. What's um, this? Chicken. Potatoes, salad. Again, that looks like, what, a bit of pork or a bit of chicken, yes. something like that? Yeah. And that's it. Hannah consumes just over 1,000 calories a day. An average woman should consume double that. Not only is she under-eating, she's also missing out on most of the vitamins and minerals her body requires. Right, Andy, we're going to start with your breakfasts. OK. Whoa! Believe it or not, <laughs> I thought I was skipping breakfast. Let's go on and have a look at your lunches. Wow, OK. Kebab, chips, saveloy. Let's see what you eat for dinner. Masses more chips, saveloy, burger. There's a theme running through this tube. Do you see what it is? I seem to have, as you can say, chips with everything. This has always been the way I've eaten. OK. You also snack in between meals. Thanks to his junk food diet, Andy is clocking up over 5,000 calories a day. He consumes three times his recommended daily salt intake and a whopping 250 grams of fat. The, the sheer quantities, it's upset me. I, I didn't expect that at all. 
truth be told, we've all got our own hang-ups when it comes to our bodies. I'm no exception. I've lost two stone in two years, and am I happy? Am I hell? All I see in front of the mirror are imperfections. That's where it all goes so horribly wrong. I've become totally obsessed with getting the body beautiful. You name it, I'll do it, and I'm not averse to trying the odd quick fix. This year, I've decided to dedicate myself to achieving the body I've always wanted, and I'm willing to try anything to tackle those problem areas. Oh. And speaking of problem areas, my arms. I have got proper dinner lady arms. Look at that, big wobbly bingo wings. Everything I own has a sleeve, even my pajamas. I'm desperate to get some A-list appendages, and it seems like I'm not the only one who's obsessed. Michelle Obama's Amazonian arms almost got as many column inches as her hubby's inauguration, and magazines seem awash with talk of celebrity biceps and triceps. I've been working down the gym with Matt, my personal trainer, to get the arms I want, but that's been like joining the SAS. I don't think I could look a kettlebell in the eye ever again. I'm knackered. I'm not convinced it's working. Am I ever going to be able to go sleeveless like a true red carpet celebrity? It's time to get the inside track. TV presenter Amanda Byram knows firsthand about the pressures of looking good in Hollywood, and she's got the arms to prove it. Check you out with your Hollywood arms. Well, I mean, thank you very much. Oh. Now, why do you call them Hollywood arms? Because they are proper celebrity arms. Do you think so? And I want a pair. So, will you show me? How no, can I, I? I? I'll tell you what I do. Amanda's letting me in on her secret weapon. It may look like a giant catapult, but this girl swears by it. Biceps. One. Really slow, isolating your muscles. And oh, your that kills! You can get your hands on a resistance band like this for around a tenner. And you can bundle it into your luggage when you go away. So it's like having your very own mobile gym. Sexy arms, here I come. But you know, it's funny because you kind of think, Quick fix, for your arms, do a quick workout, no problem. It's hard work. So resistance is certainly not futile, and these giant bands have left Amanda with arms to die for. But typical me, I want results now. I can't help it. As far as I'm concerned, patience is not a virtue. If I could just find the arms I wanted in a box. Ah. Uh -huh. Now, this claims to use electronic muscle stimulation toning technology to create deep muscle contractions to tone your body. If, when I plug this in, I get blown to kingdom come, will somebody please just tell my mum I was merely trying to tone my bingo wings that I inherited from her? Ooh. That's a very strange sensation. I may not be paying in sweat, but I'm definitely paying. This system will set you back a wallet slimming £95.99p. Going up to 20 <gasps> But they say you'll see results after four weeks if you use it five times a week. If it helps me beat a bummer in the arms race, it's worth it. Whoa! I can't control my arm. Look, look at what it does. It feels like I'm having an electric shock every six sec every five seconds. Look at that. This is properly really weird. I think one of the weirdest things I've ever tried. I'll try and give it my best shot, and I'll come back to you. This week's feeding clinic residents are quick fix eater Hannah and junk food addict Andy. With their bags unpacked, it's time for the first meal of the diet swap. Fish and chips, yeah. I'm not complaining. Both got fish I, and I, chips. I might pinch some chips off you, though, if that's OK. <laughs> it might be the same meal, but Andy's is child-sized and oven-cooked, while Hannah gets the full-on fish and chip shop experience, plus a side order of Andy's favourite, kebab meat. I'm a bit intimidated. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite scary. <laughs> I think just looking at the plate in, in the first place just made me feel quite ill, to be honest, just from the quantity. Andy's gobbling his oven fish dish at breakneck speed. I'm quite scared now because I'm getting down to the end of this. <laughs> and I'm just looking at yours. <laughs> I will dream tonight about that kebab. And even though Hannah's hardly made a nod to the cod, it's already proving too much. There's probably about three or four meals here. 
I can't eat past a certain point. If I start to feel sort of slightly full or, you know, I, I feel a bit like, well, I've eaten quite a lot, I have to stop. And I can't understand how somebody can obviously build it up to eat that amount of food without feeling physically sick.